Good morning to you. Good morning. Can you tell us a little bit about the, um, the rationale behind uh, funding these projects? What, what is the point of the infrastructural investments? Well, it's absolutely vital. Obviously, it's sports funding initially, uh, and obviously, um, Connacht Rugby um, is a very important brand for the West. Um, they've, uh, I think, changed uh, rugby uh, in the West over the last number of years um, with their success, and we want to see that continue uh, to grow. So this uh, investment at all levels, obviously this at the higher level and the smaller grants as well, uh, for all other, other codes that uh, have, been, um, uh, have been given out, uh, not just this year, but since 2012, since the uh, grant was reintroduced by Minister Michael Ring at the time. Um, it's about promoting uh, sport and improving facilities for sport uh, up and down the country. So it's uh, you know, a wonderful initiative. They're, they're highly uh, sought after and uh, they're much anticipated. And uh, obviously there's a commitment uh, going forward as well. There will be continued investment uh, in sport, both in terms of um, it, it being good for you, it, it being a pastime, and also obviously the professional elements as well uh, across uh, the country of different codes. And how, how does one project win over another project? Because obviously there's a limited amount of money that can go at any point in time. You know, there's a, there's a budget every year and that, that budget can't be exceeded. So what are the criteria to decide who gets the money? Well, this is uh, scored independently um, by a, a department officials with criteria laid down. Um, as it happens, there were, I think there were around 30 projects uh, nationwide. Connacht Rugby came out as number two project, and as I understand it, uh, was substantially ahead of um, a large number of projects. There was a big gap between uh, itself and a large number of projects that came fourth, fifth, sixth, and so on. Uh, so that was the, the rationale in terms of Connacht Rugby, first of all, scoring well. Uh, the the department um, put a cap of 10 million on the large scale infrastructural project, so Connacht Rugby were getting 10 million from that fund and well deserved uh, based on their rankings. Uh, the project itself was, is, is a 30 min million redevelopment, and Connacht Rugby have stated for a long, long time that they needed a minimum of 20 million um, to enable this project to proceed. And, you know, a lot of people in, in the West were well aware of that. Um, all the deputies. Uh, my colleagues in the constituency uh, across the province, um, and obviously the Taoiseach was well aware of that. He visited Connacht Rugby last May, I believe it was, and um, saw the plans at about a 45-minute presentation uh, from Connacht Rugby, from, um, from the team there, Willie Ryan and Carl Boyle, and um, was obviously very impressed with that. But thankfully, and most importantly, Connacht Rugby, as I said, came out second um, from the independent ranking within the department, and they were well-deserving uh, of, um, of funding and of support. And is there, uh, how much money comes from the IRFU, for example, for a project like this, when, when they obviously have significant cash reserves themselves? Well, that's a, that's a matter now for for um, for Connacht Rugby uh, to 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 tell. Obviously, they uh, fund projects like they, they they provide funding over uh, over the years anyway. Uh, each year to groups like Connacht Rugby. So, in terms of what they might be getting or what they might be committing to, the uh, the balance of the project will be a, a matter for them. But yeah, um, I guess the, I guess it's a, it's a public funding question though. Like, do do the government obviously feel comfortable investing when it's going to a sports organisation that we know can you know it's well run? The RFU, for example, we're not talking about um, giving this money to the FAI, for example. Um, like what, what, what is the thinking behind giving money to sports organisations that actually do have significant reserves of cash on their balance sheets? Uh, well, look, it's a question of, of, for Connacht Rugby in terms of what the IRFU have promised or haven't promised. Uh, sure, but I, I mean, I'm talking about from a philosophical point of view. From the government's point of view, from the government's point of view, Galway and the West are as deserving of a high-class rugby stadium as much as Dublin, Cork uh, or, or Limerick. We want to increase capacity for the for the big game so Connacht can continue to attract quality players, um, grow their fan base. Uh, you know, we have seen projects in the past, whether it be 30 million to Porky Cueve and Cork, we've seen in, investment and other stadia as well. So uh, Connacht and the West are as deserving of that. And I think uh, Taoiseach saw that. He recognised that. Um, and as I said, um, you know, there was full support for Connacht Rugby from, um, from deputies uh, and ministers, indeed, in the West of, in the West of Ireland. So, so it's, a, it's, about, know, it, it's about a local this is issue. Be, this is going to be hugely important for the economy. How? Of How that? That's well. the question. And, and so I, what I still don't understand is why don't you just get the IRFU to pay for it? 
Well, the IRFU haven't committed to pay for it. The IRFU, um, I think they ranked this as their number two project after the RDS. Um, I couldn't be sure that the um, IRFU uh, would give a commitment in this regard to Connacht Rugby. Certainly Connacht Rugby didn't, get, um, didn't uh, let us know that there was any commitment, and I don't believe there was from the IRFU to uh, fund this. Indeed, when uh, we wrote or I wrote on behalf of Western deputies to meet um, Philip Brown of the IRFU. Um, he told us to, you know, pretty much he didn't want to meet us uh, and to go and consult with the the guys locally. So uh, I wouldn't have had great confidence there if you were going to come up uh, with a balance of 10 million uh, to fund this uh, project. Um, maybe they will, and I'm sure there's future plans that Connacht Ruby might have as well that the IRFU might be able to support. But I'm confident that this was the the right decision. It was, uh, you know, right for for rugby, uh, right for the economy. Uh, of Galway City that's been massive support uh, for this project over the last number of years. So can I just, uh, sorry, I just want to clarify that. So you're, you're, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth and I don't want to interpret this wrong. You, you talked to the IRFU's CEO and they said you need to talk to the Connacht branch. You weren't sure that the IRFU at central level were, were going to commit to funding for this. So you stepped in with taxpayers' money to make sure that the project happened. Is that a correct, uh, is that an accurate reflection of what you just said? What I'm saying is that the um, CEO of the IRFU refused or did not agree to meeting a delegation from the West uh, Western TDs to discuss this project. We received no indication that the IRFU were going to fund a 10 million shortfall for a project that is hugely vital to the continued success of Connacht Rugby and the West of Ireland. Fully deserved. Came out second in the scoring uh, from the Department uh, of Sport uh, of all projects in the country. Came second based on, um, on, on, the, on the criteria. So a well deserved a project that you know stood up um, in, com- in terms of competition from other projects uh, and as I said Galway and the West you know deserve a rugby stadium as much as anywhere else so I'm not sure we'd be having this conversation to be honest about it if we're talking about uh, Linster uh, or Munster so well, we should, we, we, hang on, we should, we should, else, we should be, be talking about it but we should be having this conversation we should be having this conversation about Parky Cueve and whether or not the, the, the taxpayer got value for money when you look at how the Parky Cueve uh, finances are in so much question at the moment. Like, did the taxpayer get value for money of Porky Cueve? And does the taxpayer get value for money in spending on stadiums for sports organisations that can actually generate their own money? Would we not be better spending this 10 million on coaches in Connacht? That's the question. It's what, why, why do we decide that the no, money need, needs to go? Why do we, we need the facility? Connacht, why, Connacht, why, Connacht, why couldn't I just Connacht, share a stadium with somebody else? Connacht need, um, Connacht need high class um, stadiums like, like anywhere else. They Shouldn't want to the IRFU capacity. pay for that, though, that's Sean? That's not the issue. We need. And we must, we why, must, why does the taxpayer I, foot the bill? That's the question. Why does the taxpayer well, because the government foot made the, the bill? Decision, the government made the decision that this is strategic investment in the West, that this is good value for money, that this is good for the economy of Galway, and that this is good for rugby. So I stand over spending uh, taxpayers' money. Um, I said this is what the fund is for. It's for large-scale infrastructural um, sports projects. Uh, and as I said, other projects have benefited in the past, and I'm sure other projects will benefit in the future. So this is you know, something that I'm proud that we've been able to, to deliver to the West of Ireland. And I know that this will assist Connacht Rugby in terms of um, their future, in terms of their viability, in terms of their success, in terms of increasing the capacity at the stadium, in terms of attracting uh, the next generation of quality players and growing the game. And that's what it's about. I mean, we want to see uh, young, young, young guys and, and, and girls coming through uh, the system and uh, eventually playing for, 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 for Connacht and playing for Ireland. And, uh, you know, there, there's youth elements to this as well uh, in terms of boys and girls that will be benefiting and playing in a high-quality stadium as well. So I think this is a win-win for the West and a win-win for Galway City. And I'm proud that the government has, has stepped in and provided this funding. Sean, are you aware of the IRFU conversations with, I don't know, Leinster Rugby or whoever's behind the redevelopment of the RDS? Because he said there a moment ago that the sports grounds project was clearly number two after the RDS. Uh, on what criteria... Uh, and uh, what list is that that you saw that uh, suggests that the sports grounds was a uh, second priority after the RDS on, that, in the view of the IRFU? That's the indication that we've received um, from the department. That, that, they've, that they've ranked it. I mean, this project, as I said, was also um, Galway City Council's, you, you know, top choice by Galway City Councillors. That's the way they have to, the local authorities have to indicate their preferences, and they scored uh, number one. So, look, this is a win-win for Connacht uh, and for Galway uh, City for growing the game, uh, for the economy. You know, there was 8,000 there at the sports ground last Saturday, uh, and we want to see that grow. And, to, you know, as I said, the, particularly for the big games, the amount of people and the amount of uh, income that's generated in 
Galway City. We know the location of the sports ground. It's at the heart of the city. Good public transport links. It's on state-owned lands, the Board uh, property. So it's a, it's a win-win, and I'm confident that it's good investment uh, for the taxpayer. Another thing that's uh, popped up, and it's always a conversation that we have, Sean, with regards to uh, sports capital funding and with any government funding when it comes to sports uh, projects in particular, is just where it goes towards politicians' own cons- uh, constituencies. So we had 87 million euro, and I'm just talking about Friday alone, not yesterday's grants, but 87 million euro handed out on Friday. And between your own constituency and Shane Ross's constituency, uh, you drew 30 million quid out of the entire amount, which left 57 million euro for everybody else. Between two constituencies of two of the chief politicians involved, uh, that's, that's quite a bit, isn't it? Well, I wouldn't say I was a chief politician involved. I'm not the Minister for Sport. I'm not the Minister of State for Sport. That's uh, Brendan Griffin as Minister of State. Um, I certainly um, am delighted that this project was successful. The the other project that was achieved in Galway was uh, an Apenian Aquatic um, Centre. Uh, again, I think it was promoted by uh, Swim Ireland as their national project. It happens to be in Galway, but it's a national project. Uh, and this happens to be in Galway City. Connacht Rugby happens to be in Galway City, but it's a provincial project. And as I said, support by colleagues in Mayo, uh, Sligo, uh, and and elsewhere. So it's good. Uh, it's good for the West, and it's it's good for rugby in general. I mean, I think teams like coming to Galway, fans. Um, yeah, it's be great, and we think Ulster, we think Linster we absolutely Munster think that Connacht should have good facilities. Games and um, you know, they, they they know Galway City is a is a is a, a fun place to be after a night out after absolutely. a game. Absolutely, but John, everybody agrees. Everybody agrees that Connacht should have world class facilities. We just think the IRFU should pay for them because the IRFU are already in receipt of of various public money and have their own stadium that they generate loads of money from in the Aviva and they're a very profitable organisation. I just, I just think that as a, as a culture we need to start thinking about whether or not we use public money when we have a lot of things that we need to spend public money on. You look at our hospitals, you look at the homelessness crisis, you look at all that stuff and you go, is this the best use of our resources at the moment? Of course we should be investing in things. Of course we should be trying to uh, bring people together around sport. But when a sports body like the IRFU can generate its own funding, then maybe we need to throw the responsibility back to them. And maybe the politicians shouldn't just accept a, oh no, sorry, I'm not going to meet you from the CEO of the IRFU, for example. Um, I'm confident that this project is good uh, investment of taxpayers' money. And, uh, As in we're IRFU, going to see a return I mean, on it? You can put those how, questions how do you, how do you measure that, in terms John? of how they spend their money and what they're spending their money on. As I said, there are other, um, there are other cities and other regions that have received investment from the state, uh, and I'm confident that this was um, you know, good investment by taxpayers um, in relation to Galway and uh, the province uh, of Connacht to stand over. Uh, the project stood on its own merit. It was number two of, of the list okay. nationally with 30, and um, I know you said, said in all terms that. of the IRFU and their plans, that's entirely a question for them. Grant, okay, we, we, we put those questions to the IRFU on the back of this. I just want to read you um, this from, from um, Brian Hayes, back when he was in the Shannad. Uh He described the system of giving grants as the personification of political patronage. He said the allocations of sports grants should be handed over to local authorities. And we've we've um, talked to people who've done research on this. John Considine, a professor from UCC, said that we found that when Jim McDade was in the Department of Sport, Donegal was the highest sports capital grants per capita. When he left, Donegal slid down the rankings. He's replaced by John O'Donoghue. You could argue at that stage that it's just Fianna Fall, but then he gets replaced by Michael Ring and Mayo do quite well. So we found there was a geographical distribution. The money followed the minister, basically. And that situation was set up as uh, something that was um, in practice from the Fianna Fáil government and you guys in Fine Gael have continued on exactly how sports funding works in this country and it always, always, without fail, follows the Minister. Well, again, as I repeat, I'm not the Minister for Sport and I'm not uh, the Minister of State for Sport. There are, what, 28 Ministers in the country? Um, I'm one of them. Um, as I said, uh, this is a, a, a project that was number two um, project from the IRFU. Um, the second project for Galway, the Swim One, Swim Ireland one, was their number one national project for Aquatic Centre. Um, and as I said, this was number two in the rankings, independent rankings within the department uh, of all large-scale projects. I think there was 30 in the country, and Connacht Rugby scored number two, and there was a huge gap between itself uh, and the next group uh, of projects. So you can see, though, how it's difficult. Uh, they deserve... Uh, the investment, and I know they'll put it to good use to you grow the see, game. You can see how it's difficult. You can see how it's difficult for us to distinguish between Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil when it comes to the administration of sports grants. Uh, well, 
what's what's wrong with funding projects based on their rankings? I mean, I didn't come up with the rankings. I didn't come up with the scoring. That was done uh, based on uh, the application, and obviously the funding uh, sought and received is testament to the quality of the application that was put in by Connacht Rugby. Um, and as I said, I'm not the Minister for Sport, so to, to, to accuse me of being able to interfere in the allocation of funding, uh, certainly I lobbied for it, absolutely, as did other politicians uh, in the West uh, for a uh, project, a provincial project for the West, and I make no apologies for it. As I said, Connacht how, how does that lobbying uh, deserves work? as much as, as, as uh, Dublin, Cork or Limerick. How does that lobbying work? Is it with department officials? No. Absolutely not. Who's I've uh, discussed this project with, um, uh, obviously, with the Taoiseach uh, and with ministers. But as I said, the ranking came out. It was number two in the rankings, uh, and there was a cap of 10 million within the large scale uh, fund. And so the, the Taoiseach the, gave a the, commitment the politicians based on the don't quality speak, of the application. The politicians don't speak with the, the, the officials within the department. So, for example, the Minister for Sport wouldn't speak with his department officials to, to lobby on behalf. Or So, if you, if you lobbied with Brendan Griffin, for example, Brendan Griffin would never then go on to talk to his officials in his department? Uh, well, of course he talks to his officials in the department. I mean, about your lobbying? The Minister of State uh, for Sport, so I mean, he was making uh, the announcement together with, uh, with Shane Ross. Um, so, I mean, uh, that's the question for them. But as I said, this was the number two project, fully deserved. Um, uh, I think it was the Minister Ross put a cap of 10 million under the large scale infrastructural funds. And uh, I said this was the number two project. They sought 20 million uh, for a 30 million project. They got 10 million for the infrastructural fund based on the quality uh, of the project. Uh, the the Taoiseach committed to further funding to make this a, a project that the Connacht Rugby can proceed with uh, starting this summer uh, to redevelop the pitch, to redevelop a, a, a new stand, new training facilities, uh, and uh, you know, uh, income generating facilities there as well to allow for uh, a viable future for Connacht Rugby and something that we all want to see in the, in the West and, uh, and in Galway City in particular. So I make no apologies. I think it's good strategic regional investment um, uh, for, 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 for Galway and the West. Even taking your own situation, out of it for a moment, Sean. Are you saying it's just a coincidence that uh, quite an amount has been spent in the Minister for Sport's own constituency? And I'm not just talking about Fine Gael. If you go back to McDade, you go to O'Donoghue, and now you go to Ross. I mean, Dunleary Ratdown has done very, very well here as well. Is that just a coincidence in your view? Well, uh, I, I don't know what projects were funded, to be honest, in Shane Ross's constituency, uh, but I, I know what's been funded um, in, in my own area, and I can justify those based on the rankings that were achieved. I mean, you can, you can, you can look for that information. I have no doubt people will be uh, in terms of the rankings for all these projects. And uh, there was a cut-off point, and yes, there are disappointed people that, that didn't get funding, but they had projects that scored lower um, than, for example, Connacht Rugby. Right, we'll leave it there. Sean Kine, thanks very much for joining us this morning. You're welcome.